Siege right now is in one of the most fragging heavy metas we have ever been in. Operators like Iana, Ash, Thorn, and even Warden makes fragging extremely fun and easy for nearly anyone to do. This has caused a lot of Siege operators to be completely forgotten and replaced by operators that are much better at that task. So in today's video, I'll be telling the story of one of Siege's most forgotten operators. He used to be picked nearly every round, and now he has been thrown to the side with a pick rate of less than 5%. Now, who am I talking about? Well, to answer that question, we must go all the way back to November of 2016. Now, the start of our story brings us to Operation Red Crow, all the way back in Year 1 Season 4. This season is widely considered to be the best season of Year 1. With the introduction of Red Crow, we saw the addition of Skyscraper to the map pool, and we got two new operators that mixed up the meta drastically. Those operators being Habana and Echo. Habana was an absolute game changer because at the time, there was only one other hard breacher, Thermite. So having a new hard breacher that can target hatches was a pretty big deal. However, we aren't here to talk about Habana. We're actually here to talk about Echo. Echo was an operator unlike anything we had really seen before. He was the only operator of the time that had a drone on defense. And the drone's ability to not only gather intel, but to also counter a plant made him an operator that was worth looking out for. However, on release, Echo wasn't nearly as good as he was at his peak. Firstly, on release, Echo only had access to one drone, not two like he does today. Also, when using his drones, you had to hit the head of an opponent to disorient them, which limited the angles that you could use his yokais on. So this resulted in Echo not being picked that much on release. His gadget honestly just didn't bring enough to the table to justify having a high pick rate. However, all of that would change when Echo received a pretty major balancing change in Year 3 Season 2 also known as Operation Parabellum. Operation Parabellum just so happens to be my favorite operation of all time. It brought us some great balancing changes, the clubhouse rework, the new map villa, and two amazing new operators. These operators were Alibi and Maestro, both of which are really good operators by today's standards. Also, the seasonal weapon skins were extremely good, which was a huge plus for me. But what we are here for today, obviously, is the changes to Echo. Echo saw his biggest changes to date come with this season, and they altered him into an absolute monster. These changes being Ubisoft giving him his second drone, his charges per drone were reduced to two from three, and his recharge time was increased to 20 seconds. Now you may be wondering, this seems like Echo mostly got nerfed. Well, the addition of his second drone made him way stronger and by far made up for the nerfs he received. And immediately after this update, Echo started to see his pick rate rise and not only ranked, but Pro League as well. However, it would take a while for these changes to really set in with the community. But once they did, a few seasons later, an Intel meta was born. The Intel meta was, in my opinion, one of the most fun metas to play in. This meta meant Maestro, Echo, and Valk were being picked a ton, and anyone who could counter them, especially IQ, soared in pick rate. You can see this replicated in any Pro League match of the time. This, in my opinion, is Siege how it's meant to be played. Defenders were trying their best to find good camera spots so that they could deny the plant, while the attackers were focused on denying Defender Echo drones and Maestro cams so that they could go for a plant. This is a stark contrast to today's run and gun meta, I know, but it was extremely fun. However, this meta would end up dying roughly around the introduction of Omai, and it was replaced by the utility meta. Even though Echo's best days were numbered, this definitely isn't the end of his story. And sadly for him, he had a long downward spiral ahead. Now, the beginning of that spiral would come, like I said, with the introduction of Omai in Year 4 Season 4, formerly known as Operation Shifting Tides. Operation Shifting Tides was a pretty solid operation overall. We saw the introduction of Wamai and Kali, which were both fun and interesting operators in their own right. And we saw the introduction of the new map rework for Theme Park, which improved on the original drastically. However, on top of all this great new content, there was some interesting balancing changes to come along with. Some of these changes included removing Maestro's ACOG, nerfing Jaeger's gun, and nerfing ADS times across the board. However, what we're here for today is obviously the changes to Echo. These changes mainly revolved around Dokubi, which these changes allowed Dokubi to call Echo and to hack into his yokai drones when she hacked a phone. This may not have seemed that bad at the time, but in today's meta where Dokubi has a massive presence, this change definitely affected Echo. It just wasn't noticed until way in the future. And the balancing changes targeted at Echo continued to get weirder and weirder. A great example of this are the changes that came in Year 5 Season 2, also known as Operation Steel Wave. Operation Still Wave was a pretty controversial operation due to the operators released in it. Those operators being Malusi and Ace, who both took the game by storm and were incredibly overpowered on release. Additionally, the map rework for House that came in this season was hated by most of the people that played it. So we already aren't on a good start with this season, 
but the balancing changes to Echo were just plain weird. This season saw the removal of Yokai's drone's concussion shaking your camera, and they made the concussion duration last a fixed 10 seconds. This was a weird nerf to say the least, but this was part of Ubisoft's buildup to the big nerf that was soon to come Echo's way. But the nerf that came in Still Wave realistically did nothing in the short term. All it really did was remove an annoying part of the Yokai drones that most people didn't like going against. However, as mentioned earlier, a nerf that was about to come to Echo would completely ruin his drones. That nerf would come in Year 5 Season 4, also known as Operation Neon Dawn. Operation Neon Dawn was overall a pretty good operation. We saw the introduction of the new operator, Aruni, who was pretty strong at the time. We got the Skyscraper rework added to the pool, which is one of my favorite maps. And we saw a ton of groundbreaking balancing changes like the Hibana and Jaeger reworks. However, we're obviously here for the Echo change. This change was making his yokais no longer cloak. This alone was a massive nerf to Echo. The main strength of Echo's drones was being able to counter a plant. But now, since his cameras were a lot more obvious, this would be much more difficult to pull off because as soon as you would go to counter a plant, your drone would be seen and shot. This marked the official downfall of Echo, and he honestly never recovered from this. He immediately began falling in pick rate and his ranking on the tier list plummeted. This caused Ubisoft to want to do something to try and ease the pain. So they would give him some slight buffs in the midseason. Those included reducing his jump cooldown, his sonic burst cooldown was reduced, and his jump failure cooldown was reduced. This was basically just some number tweaks, that's it. These changes made his drones feel more fun to use, but they didn't solve the actual issue with his gadget now. Those issues being that his yokais are loud, making them hard to move, and they are obvious since they are no longer invisible. Now this would normally be where our story would end, a once fun operator nerfed to the ground as usual and left to rot for the rest of eternity. However, Echo is an interesting case because despite everything I just mentioned, I still think he is an overlooked operator in the modern day. He brings two amazing primary weapons, the MP5 SD and the Supernova Shotgun. He has access to a secondary pistol and he brings a deployable shield to the table. Now his gadget may not be as good as it once was, but if you use his yokais to support your roamers, instead of trying to use them to counter a plant, you'll get a lot more utility out of them. This is why I think Echo is slept on. People just don't know how to play him. They try to use his drones like they used to way back when, but that form of play just doesn't work anymore. I hope that someday people will begin to realize his strength or maybe if I'm optimistic, Ubisoft might buff him back to his former glory, but we'll just have to wait and see. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's story of Rainbow Six Siege's most forgotten operator. If you did, I make Siege content just like this twice a week, so go subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter if you don't wanna miss the next upload. Also, if you wanna see more of me, go follow me on Twitch because I'll be going live roughly six hours after this video goes up, and hopefully I'll see you there. Also, if you wanna see yourself in new videos or streams, join up in the Discord. I wanna get active over there, so don't be afraid to join up. Now, if you wanna watch another video just like this one, I'll be popping up on your screen right now where I talk about the best defender to ever touch Rainbow Six Siege. I'll see you next time, friends, and peace.